Well, thank you for coming. Um, this is a webinar about hacking modern uh, web applications with remote code execution and prototype pollution. Uh, this is to promote a session that will happen in X33FCon. Uh, so sorry about the uh, problem with the other platform. Um, yeah, so let's get uh, let's get started. So we're going to look, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick overview about what the course is about, and then we're just going to jump into some practical stuff like uh, remote code execution against uh, Node.js applications. And then we will look at uh, prototype pollution, and there's going to be a couple of uh, quick demos about this. So I'm Abraham uh, Aranguren, I'm the CEO of Seveny Security. Uh, if you find this interesting, maybe you find interesting as well the uh, reports that we have on the website. Uh, in this link, there's upcoming uh, training courses, if you are interested in that. Uh, I also wrote a course for e-learn security, uh, practical web defense, so you can click on that if you are interested. I'm also the OWASP OWTF uh, project leader, so if you type just OWTF.org, that takes you to the OWASP page. There's some other presentations here and some security certifications. Uh, in case you're interested about how I did it, uh, I can explain the story over a beer or something. So yeah, on the website, uh, there's some public reports and you can click on those and you will see some uh, stuff there. Uh, another author of this course is Ani Rodanan. He's uh, a CTF player. He has some uh, nice certifications as well. And uh, he is a member of uh, Team BIOS, which is the, the number one uh, ranked uh, CTF team in India, right? So, yeah, um, I think we are going to skip this part because we are a little bit late. So, basically, the course uh, requires. I'm just going to meet another joiner. So, the course uh, allows. Um, allows you to use VirtualBox. So you can have VirtualBox and you need some RAM and some disk space and all this, uh, nothing too fancy. And then you get uh, some lab VM, some test applications, source code for the test apps, uh, and you have lifetime access to a training portal where there's all future updates for free, step-by-step -step video recording slides, lab PDFs, uh, and unlimited email support. So this is all part of the package in all our courses, right? So. Uh, the course about hacking web applications has two parts. So in the first part, uh, we look, uh, it has like seven labs. And in the first lab, we, took a, we take a look at a quick introduction to Node.js. So we see some tools, uh, Sneak, Retire.js, NPM Audit, uh, some tools like this to do some static code analysis to give you like a quick start. And then some tools to, uh, implement security headers and other protection for uh, Node.js, right? Then we have a lab about injection attacks. So we cover SQL injection, NoSQL injection, uh, some CVEs, uh, server-side template injection, some attacks like this that are uh, typical for modern applications. Then there's another lab about uh, client-side attacks. So there's like XSS, content security policy, cross-site request forgery, open redirect attacks, uh, click jacking, exploiting, or fixing it. Then business logic flows, we cover insecure direct object references, uh, bypassing CAPTCHA and things like this. Then uh, this lab is the one that people uh, like the most because it has a lot of cool attacks uh, that have CVEs and that have been found in real applications. So path traversals, arbitrary file write, code execution, uh, regular expression denial of service and arbitrary code injection. And then the attack cryptography lab about attacking AWT tokens, uh, coupon codes, uh, and things like this, right? So this is part one, then it ends with a CTF. Uh, and then part two covers per pollution. So part two is more kind of advanced and esoteric attacks. So the first the first lab is about per pollution attacks. So I will talk a little bit about this today. So about what it is and how you can go about and exploiting it and we cover some CVEs on this as well. Then lab two is about subtle and interesting vulnerability cases. So we have type confusion, uh, anterialization uh, and things like this. So there's some stuff in PHP, some stuff in Python, some stuff in Node.js, but all kind of modern uh, application attacks, right? So about attacking like the modern application stacks. Then we have uh, a lab about attacking um, auth. So there's about installing and setting up 
a vulnerable app, and then there's an introduction to this kind of this kind of authentication and, and the flows and all this, and how we can attack uh, different uh, parameters about this. And then, of course, uh, file upload. So there's like a lot of techniques uh, to cover here, and this is one of the biggest labs. And there's more to come, right? So I'm not showing you the, the, the next two because we're still uh, adding a lot of content and figuring out how to organize it best. And then at the end of this, there's also uh, a CTF, right? So that is uh, the end of what the course is about. And today I'm just going to show uh, a couple of parts that we cover in the course, right? So this part about uh, remote code execution options against Node.js applications, this is part of uh, the first day, uh, the first lab of the first day, right? So just a small part of the first lab of the first day is so remote code execution in Node.js, right? So if you get access to this webinar, uh, you can send me an email and I will give you the recording of this uh, as well as access to the training portal where you will be able to download the slides and download all these applications that we're going to use today. So you can follow the slides and poke with the applications and play with them and all of these uh, for free, right? So there's absolutely no strings attached. Uh, yeah, so that's just for you forever as well. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, take a look. So where is the vulnerability here? Does anybody see a problem? So yeah, the video recordings of the training are always provided. So anybody see a problem here? Eval function, yes. So, Shetty, you were the fastest. Uh, yes, the problem is we have an eval, right? So we have an eval here. It's evaluating the queue get parameter, and then it's going to return whatever comes uh, on the response, right? So it's going to say response send, and um, and it's just going to render that, right? So then um, we can do a lot of things, right? So we have this parameter that is going to be evaluated. So we can, for example, multiply two numbers and see that we get the result, right? We can also use Node.js stuff. So for example, we can requir require a module and then we do, for example, format and then string uh, and we just say hack, right? Something like this. So on the command line, I like to use PHP uh, like in line like this. So you can do, for example, php-r echo, and then you do URL encode of the payload, and then you don't have to, like you play with the payload here, uh, unencoded, and you can just get the response, right? So, but essentially this is the same as this, and you get this hello heart, right? So, uh, and this is going to uh, basically load uh, a Node.js library, right? So this does not look very dangerous, right? But what about, we require another module, right? What about if we require a file system module and then we read local files? So then this starts to get more interesting because we can uh, do the URL encode of requirefs, read file and read Etsy password, for example, right? So we can read local files uh, from the server, which is pretty bad. But uh, we can do more things. Of course, we can run any command. So for example, using this, we can execute uh, we can, for example, create a file, right? So um, this is the same. So we URL encode this and pass it to the queue parameter, right? So required shell process exec, and then we touch, uh, we touch uh, a file, right? And in here, when we do ls on slash tmp, we can see that uh, the file hacked, which we were touching here, has appeared, right? Uh, and of course, the coolest thing is to get a reverse shell, right? So you just set up your NCAT listener, and then uh, you're going to get something like this, listening on 000, and you can send a payload like this. One of, like any, if you Google um, like shell wall liners or something like this, there's a lot of websites with things like this. So this is just one example. So you can create uh, basically uh, uh, a FIFO here, like uh, on the file system, right? And then just piping SH and doing all these like concatenations and stuff, basically you can pipe the shell to Netcat and then you can uh, send your reverse shell to, to your receiver, right? So this is what it looks like. So we're basically doing the same thing, just URL encode of this and passing it to uh, the queue parameter. 
and then this is going to return uh, this on the output, right? So on the other terminal where we have the network, the netcard receiver, we will see something like this connection from somewhere received, and then we can just run commands ID, ls, and cat, etc. password, right? But this is how that looks. Yeah, so let me do it, right? So we run a uh, vulnerable uh, Node.js application here, right? And we can do all these things using curl, for example, right? So I'm doing here now, for example, the multiplication to plus uh, two by three, right? So we get hello six. Um, I can also uh, do the concatenation, right? So I'm requiring the util module and then I concatenate hacked and I get hello hacked. Uh, another thing I can do is uh, to cut a password, right? So this is what I was showing before. So we're doing curl. And on the vulnerable parameter, we're doing the URL encode of this. So we had basically reading Etsy password. And of course, the coolest is the remote shell. So I already have uh, the Netcat listener here. And uh, what I'm going to do is run this command, right? So we're piping this. We're doing all the shell one liner here and we get hello object. And here we get the shell. Right, so now I can type here ID, and I can add empty password, uh, and I can run ls, and I can do like everything, right? So, uh, so yeah, so this is uh, what you can do on the command line. Another option is to do it uh, using the, the browser itself, right? So if I go to Firefox, and I go back here, and make this bigger, Okay, so we can do the same thing basically uh, using using this, right? So I'm just going to reset the server because the code execution will fail. I think this one, and then I'm going to start the server again. And now we should be good to go, right? So I do uh, two, uh, multiply by three, we get six. I do the require with the format, right? And hacked, and we get a hello, hello hacked. So we are, con uh, we are correctly including this module and executing this. Now this is the example with the Etsy password, right? So this is how it looks like on the browser. Uh, it's the same thing, right? So we just have a link. Uh, this is the one that creates the hacked file. So uh, I can go here and do, for example, ls um, hack, and this is my thing, right? So if, I run, if I'm run, I run the date command, you can see this is the same time in which this hacked file was created. So this proves uh, code execution. And then another thing I can do is, of course, get the uh, remote shell, right? So I click that, and then here on the remote shell, uh, I think this is the one from before, so I'll have to do it again, uh, this again. Okay, I think I closed the, <laughs> I closed my terminal. Uh, okay, this is the problem with live demos. So, I'm just going webinar, I think this was here, and I do know mode of uh, this one, right? So the server is running again, and now if wait, so important. This is listening, right? And now if I click this, uh, we are getting here again the shell, right? So you can do the same thing. So can you get <laughs> we can do the same thing from uh, the browser, right? So this is uh, yeah. So with this, I think. That's enough for the demo. So now I'm going to uh, stop sharing. So can you see my slides now? Okay, good. So yeah, so that is about um, the introduction to code execution in Node.js, right? So 
basically you can once you get uh, evaluation of javascript on the server you can invoke uh, all these uh, node.js functionality modules and do stuff with them right so that is pretty much what we saw and now we're going to move on and talk about per day pollution right so So with prototype pollution, um, basically what we're doing is we are polluting the prototype of a base object, right? So in JavaScript, everything is an object. And when we pollute the object, the object, sometimes we can get a uh, code execution, right? So there's this guy, uh, Olivier, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce his surname. He gave a great talk at NorthSec 2018, and he explained this very well. I'm not sure uh, he was the actual discovery or discoverer of this type of issue, but he uh, gave a very interesting talk about it, right? So uh, before jumping into this class of vulnerabilities, I'm just going to show some concepts. Right? So in JavaScript, everything is an object, and an object is a collection of key value pairs, right? So each pair uh, is a property, right? So the property has a property name, and then we assign a value to it. Uh, and the object is the fundamental object upon which all further objects are created, right? You can have empty objects, but this is not normal in JavaScript, right? So you can do object create and pass a null as an argument of to object create, and this will completely eliminate uh, prototype pollution attacks because then there's basically no um, no prototype anymore to uh, override. Um, but this is rare, right? Normally, this is not done. Normally, in JavaScript, when you create an object by default, it's going to have uh, methods like to string, and it's going to inherit other properties from uh, the parent object and things like that, right? So these uh, null objects are not common, but they are possible, and they are good mitigation against uh, prototype pollution attacks, right? So we have, for example, console log and then object create null, right? So you can see. You can do this in the browser. So you press like F12 and try these commands and, and you will be able to see all this because this is all JavaScript. So you can do it from the browser development tools uh, in your own browser, right? So you do console log uh, and then you will get this, right? So we'll have no properties when uh, the objects are created with this null argument, right? If you don't put null, then you will get properties. Right, you will have like two string, another method here, and more stuff than than just this, right? So that that is the idea. So you can have functions, you can have classes, right? So I'm just going to uh, skip over that a little bit. So basically, you can have, for example, a function company, and then this function inside of this function you have like a name, founder details, and then it returns something, right? So you do console log of company dot prototype. And then you will see there's a constructor, and the constructor has this company function, right? And then there's this uh, prototype here, right? So the constructor points back to the function itself, right? Now, another example, we have, we create a new company, Google, right? And we assign it to this variable, and then we do console log company. And then we do company details, and then we get the details of the company, right? So you will see... If you do this in the browser development tools, uh, you will see stuff like this, right? So company name Google founded and all this, and then you have details founded uh, and all this kind of stuff, right? So the slash la, uh, underscore underscore proto underscore underscore points to the function prototype, right? So you can see this, here, right? So you have the, the proto here, and then there's constructor, and this points to company name founded, right? So that is the... The function, right? So the constructor is a magical property which returns the function that was used to create the object, right? So this is more or less how uh, this looks like, right? So you have the function here, founded, uh, and all this. And then you can do company.constructor.constructor, and then you have like the code of, of the function, right? So constructor.constructor points to the global function constructor, right? Uh, so prototypes in JavaScript, uh, even though prototype objects are added by default, they can also be added at runtime, right? So um, we can modify the function prototype to add a new property, and we can achieve similar results using objects as well, 
So an interesting here to note is that even though we have modified the company one object, uh, another company two is also changed, right? So you have company two details and you have company two details is not a function. And then you have company one details equals function. And then uh, when you do company two details, uh, this returns the output of this other function here, right? So the second object has been modified by using the first object, right? So this is something uh, that can happen depending on how objects are merged together and things like this, right? So this is always going to depend uh, on the application itself, right? So you can have, for example, object A, uh, you know, like with square brackets, A, B equals C. Uh, so if an attacker can control A and B, then they can set A to the underscore underscore proto to override the prototype and then property B will be defined for all existing objects of the application with the value C, right? So you can uh, modify uh, the functionality of the application in ways uh, that was not anticipated, right? So um, this is exploitable on only if uh, any of the following three happens, right? So you need an object recursive merge, uh, you need or a, pro a property definition by path or an object clone, right? So you need one of these three things to be done by the application. So not all applications have this. Uh, you need, the, I mean, this attack has some requirements that have to be met, right? So this is an example with a recursive merge, right? So we have a merge function and is, it has two objects as parameters and then it basically assigns one to the other, right? So the function starts iterating all properties of the source object and then assigns uh, the properties of the source object to the target object, right? So that is uh, the pseudocode, how it looks. Uh, and now we're going to look at this in a real application, right? So we can successfully add a new property to all, the, all of the objects if the following conditions are met, right? So we control the value of source property. So we can use this underscore underscore proto underscore underscore trick. And then we can control the value of the source code, right? So during recursion, uh, source property at some point will actually point to the prototype of the object target and this leads to adding a new property to all existing new objects, right? So this is another uh, application that will be available for you to play with. Uh, this is uh, another application, right? So you just unzip it and then CD and then just do node, uh, node uh, proto.js uh, and if it doesn't work, then you might need to install the dependencies like this, but otherwise it should work, right? So the code has some uh, recursive uh, merge, right? So there's, there's like a merge function that is uh, merging two objects insecurely. And then you have uh, two URLs. You have a sign up where you send a request to generate a cookie and then a flag. And then when the value of admin admin is one, then we have successfully polluted the global admin dictionary, right? So we basically become admin using a prototype pollution uh, attack, right? So the path sign up uh, makes a clone, which internally calls merge, which is vulnerable to prototype pollution. And then clone is called with two arguments. The first is an empty object and the second is the request body. So the attacker has full control of the object, right? So because we fully control the request body, we can pollute uh, objects, right? So our objective is to pollute the admin object and then make the program uh, print the following, right? So you have successfully polluted the object. So this is how the application looks. You can run this command by command so that uh, you understand better what's going on. And you can also modify the code to add console log uh, you know, to figure out what is happening. But basically what happens is, is this merge is what's causing uh, the prototype pollution problem, right? And then so you have this here, you can, like this is like looking through um, the attributes in B, right? So it's doing a loop for all the attributes in the B object, and then uh, it's processing this, right? And inside of here is just checking if this is an object, then just merge it. So it's a recursive function. 
uh, and if not, it just assign, assigns one to the other, right? And then we have here the clone, right? So with this, we have uh, the vulnerability, right? So you can do, for example, body, uh, JSON parse, and then you can have names or any security. And then if you clone the body to the copy body and you copy body dot name, then you will get current attribute name and seven security, right? So this is like the normal way. But another thing we can do is to pass, uh, in addition to the name, we can pass another attribute that is the uh, prototype, right? So we have underscore underscore proto, and then we can set admin uh, to one, right? And then it will be fine. Uh, it will be fine, meaning we become admin, right? So what happens is when you do admin admin, this is going to show first uh, undefined, but if you do JSON parse of this, and then you clone the object and you do admin admin, you will get here that is one, right? So at the beginning you have undefined, then you do JSON parse of, uh, of this with the prototype uh, overwrite, right? You can do all this from the browser, browser development tools, just pressing F12 and going to console, right? And then you do var uh, copy body equals clone of the body. And you will see here that there's an attribute with the prototype and we have an attribute of admin and we are setting admin admin to one right so that is basically what is happening and how we are going to exploit this right so we can see that during the clone the current attribute actually became underscore underscore proto for the prototype so this means the second iteration the attribute value was pointing to uh, the prototype and since we control the other side of the equation fully we were able to override the prototype of the global object right so um yeah this is a little bit tricky right but it will make more sense now so this is the merge function right so what makes the merge function vulnerable right so it's just this assignment here right so this is just assigning whatever comes from b to a right so and this assignment if this is a prototype it can override the prototype of this other object right so that is basically what the problem is if B is an object like this, right? With name, serving security, and then the prototype of admin set to one, right? So, uh, yeah, basically we're doing the clone with a merge like this, and then this is what uh, creates the problem with this uh, vulnerable merge function. So I think we have talked enough about this, so let's just go to the demo. But yeah, basically is what I explained already, I think all this, right? So we can send a curl command, right? And if we say, if, if the body doesn't have any uh, prototype pollution, right? If it doesn't have any prototype stuff like this and we sign up and then we try to get the flag, we're going to see you're not authorized and admin admin is going to be undefined, right? But if we do this uh, with a prototype uh, overridden here, and then we try to get the flag, we will see we have successfully uh, polluted the object. Okay, I think you can see this. And uh, so, okay, so this is the code, right? I already made this bigger. So I think you can see this fine, right? Yes, okay, good. So, This is the application, right? So in Node.js, you define the paths typically like this, right? So you do app post means that this is an endpoint that is called sign up and is going to be processed when post comes. And then this is doing a JSON stringify of the uh, request body and doing a JSON parse of this and assigning it to a body variable. And then this is the clone, right? So in the clone is where uh, the problem happens because we can, since we control the full request body, we can set the prototype. And then after this clone, uh, we can basically assign any prototype uh, we want to uh, all the objects, right? So then what's going to happen here is that uh, when the admin object is, get, is retrieved here, um, there's this check, right? So if admin admin equals one, then uh, that means that you have successfully put the object and then this will be one, 
And if not, this will be undefined, right? So let's look at this uh, in practice, right? So I'm just going to run the server, right? This doesn't work because I'm running the other server here. That should be enough, I think. Yes. Okay, so the server is running. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first send the request with uh, just a normal JSON. So you can see here there is just name and 7 sec, but there's no prototype, right? So if I hit enter on this, we get that admin admin is undefined, right? So let me just clean up the screen a little bit. So we get you're not authorized. And you can see that admin admin uh, is undefined. Okay, so this is because we are not polluting the object. Now, if I instead of that, I do the exact same thing, right? So I'm just sending the same JSON, but now here I'm passing the the prototype attribute, and I'm setting admin to one, right? So if I hit this, we can see that we get a different message that you have successfully polluted the object. And we get that admin admin is set to one. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, that's the end of the demo. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit long to explain, but uh, the demo itself is quick. Okay, so you can see the slides, yes. So there's more prototype pollution in the lab itself. So, for example, we exploit DCVE, and there's other stuff going on as well. Uh, if you want to read about this CV, this is the link. Uh, this is in the, in the course itself. And if you like this, uh, the entire course for X33FCon uh, uh, is available here. Uh, or you just go to the website, you will see all trainings. And if for any reason you cannot make it in these dates, it's also possible uh, to buy this online on the store. Uh, there's some changes being done on the store at the moment. So if you cannot find it, there's still like a way to do it. Just send me an email and I'll arrange that. So that's no problem. Uh, yeah, and if there's any questions or if anybody wants the slides and the recording uh, of this webinar, uh, just send me an email uh, to admin at 7asecurity.com and I will uh, send you an invite to the training portal with access to everything, right? The apps, the slides uh, and the recording. So let's take a look if there's any questions. I'm keeping an eye on the chat. So if anybody wants to ask something, now is the time. 